When it comes to cooling equipment, Noctia undoubtedly has a strong position in today's market thanks to their long history of high quality and high performing CPU coolers and case fans. The CPU cooler we are going to review today is one of these, the Noctua U9S in its Chromex Black Edition. A tiny 125mm high tower cooler supposed to fit perfectly into that small gap between low profile coolers and really big towers. So let's take that NHU9S to the test and see if it can live up to the expectations. This episode is brought to you by CDCovers.com. CDCovers offers a wide variety of software or game keys for a fraction of the usual retail price. You can get your usual PC game codes or even library codes for things like Steam, Uplay and Origin. But the most important part for us are the software codes. Here we can get software activation codes for things like MS Office or Windows 10 for a ridiculously cheap price. And right now you can also use the promo code TS20 to get a 20% discount to make the already cheap Windows 10 license even cheaper. If you want to get that nasty activation message away, make sure to head down to the links in the description below and don't forget to use the promo code TS20 for a 20% discount. So this is the Noctua NHU9S Chromex Black. But before we go over performance and noise, let's go over the most important specs. Being just 125mm high and 95mm wide, this tiny piece of cooling equipment is definitely meant for smaller builds. Out of the box, the NHU9 comes equipped with one NFA9 PVM Chromex Black, a 92mm fan capable of spinning at 2000 RPM while pushing up to 46.4 CFM at 2.28mm of water and yelling at 22.8 dBs. If you have the space inside of your case, you can also get an additional A9 fan and run the U9S in a dual push-pull configuration. But do keep in mind that these swap-out collar rubber pads that are coming with a separately available NFA9 fan are not included in this box. Speaking of which, after opening the box, you'll be greeted with a box of mounting hardware and the cooler sitting underneath. Inside that mounting hardware box, you will find everything neatly organized in separate compartments. In the longer one, we will find a bag containing a short PVM extension cable and some of Noctua's NH1 thermal paste as well as a long screwdriver. Once the manuals are removed, we will find the mounting hardware for AMD on one side and Intel on the other. In terms of compatibility, Noctua did include a surprising number of sockets. On Team Intel, the NHU9S can be mounted on top of the newest LGA 1200 socket as well as the older 1150s and the 2066 series. For AMD, Noxia made sure to include the latest and greatest AM4 socket while keeping the cooler backwards compatible until the older AM2 and FM1 sockets. The preparation procedure of your socket is pretty much straightforward. For LGA 1150X and 1200 sockets, we have to put the provided backplate in place and mount down the Intel brackets by using the spacers in between and screwing it down with the provided screws. On AMD sockets, we just have to remove the pre-installed plastic retention brackets and screw down the AMD brackets while placing the AMD spacers in between. Though, do keep in mind that there are two sets of spacers included, the black ones for AM4 sockets while the white ones are meant for older sockets. From here, no matter what platform is being used, the installation method remains exactly the same. Prepare your CPU with some thermal paste, remove the fan from your cooler by pressing on the clips, place it on top of the CPU while aligning the screws of the cooler with the threads of the brackets and screw it down. After that, you can reinstall your fan and connect it to your CPU fan header. So this NHU9S has to fill a pretty complicated spot on the market. It is by no means meant to play with the big boys, but it is also not meant to be crammed into a small form factor case, like the NHL9i for example. This one is more for the small gap in between real mid-tower cases and the really small stuff. Or also like more budget focused builds. Like the Intertech IM1 case, for example, which is actually the exact reason why I went out and bought this cooler. Make sure to be subscribed to not miss that video. But despite the cooler being small and more budget focused, it still has to perform. And just by looking at it, it does look promising. 5 heat pipes and a big nickel plated block. Sure, that may seem like nothing compared to the really big coolers, but it is actually really good for its size. Take the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim 2 for example. Sure, it's a centimeter bigger, but it only comes with three heat pipes. And both being meant for the exact same scenario, let's compare them head to head. 
We tested the Noxua NHU9S using a Ryzen 3700X at 4.3GHz and 1.4V V-Core. While hitting the 3700X with everything we've got, the Noxua NHU9S managed to keep it at 88 degrees C while spinning at a 100% fan speed. Then we slowly decreased the fan speed until the CPU thermal throttled at 60% of these 2000 RPM. Putting the Be Quiet Pure Rock Slim right next to it, we can see that it was always just one or two degrees behind the Noctua. When it comes to noise, both coolers are exactly reversed, with the Pure Rock Slim 2 always leading by a single decibel or maybe two. If we look at the fans, this makes a lot of sense. The fans used on both of these coolers are pretty much similar. The main difference being that the Noctua can run 100 RPM higher at 2000 RPM. And if we would assume that both fans are performing exactly the same at a given fan speed, it makes complete sense that at a 100% PVM the Noctua is a bit cooler while the Be Quiet is a bit quieter. But what doesn't make any sense to me is the absolute performance that the Noctua brings to the table. Sure, both coolers are generating pretty respectable results considering their size, but the Noctua comes with 5 heat pipes while the Be Quiet only has 3. And honestly, when I bought this, I was expecting that the NHU9S would completely knock out the Pure Rock Slim 2 just because of that. And I am still considering the fact that compared to the Pure Rock Slim, the heat does not have to travel that far to get to those fins. But in the end, both coolers are pretty much equal. One is a degree cooler, while the other one is a decibel quieter. The issue starts when it comes to the price. The Pure Rock Slim is going for around 22 euros or 25 US dollars, while the EU9S, go in Chromex Black, is going for around 64 euros or 69 US dollars. Even if we take away 10% of the EU9 price, because Chromex Black editions are a bit more expensive, we are still looking at more than double the price for pretty much nothing in return. Sure, maybe a degree, but you lose it in noise. So in the end, the only real benefit that the Noxia cooler has is that it is a centimeter smaller. Don't get me wrong, both coolers perform very well and compared to a stock AMD or Intel cooler they will always be better and quieter. But comparing especially these two coolers head to head, it gets pretty hard to go for the EU9S. In the end, if the case can only support up to 125mm coolers, it is the NH EU9S anyway. But if we can go with 135mm, I cannot justify for myself a 100% uprise for the premium of having a Noctua badge and no performance in return. So, to summarize the NH-U9S. It is a pretty good cooler performing pretty much the same as a Bequay Pure Rock Slim 2. The build quality on the other hand is outstanding. It is really heavy, everything feels sturdy and no matter how hot you press on basically anything, it won't break. The installation method is pretty easy to follow and it is compatible with basically everything. And do not forget that gorgeous matte black finish. But in the end, it is just too expensive to justify over a pure rock slim. Okay, so this was my take on the Noxia NHU9S. I hope you've enjoyed it and if so, or if not, let me know down below. And make sure to be subscribed because I still have a ton of really cool gear incoming, so stay tuned for that. Okay, bye bye.